This is a case that fairly powerfully uh, demonstrates the value of the Worley LB lead delivery system. Uh, so we have a very talented, experienced implanter who was unable to locate the CS on his first try. So here he is doing the second attempt a few months later and wisely started off uh, with CS phonography. And with this, you can see the coronary sinus and in the LAO projection, it's clear that the CS is draining into the right atrium and thus it is possible to implant once you can find the CS. So he tried but could not engage the CS with the usual industry tools, an EP catheter or an AL2. So like a lot of people, he thought, well, maybe his um, pacing might be the answer. And he got out the C315 Hiss, and rather than locating uh, the Hiss, he managed to get uh, into the coronary sinus. Uh, however, um, although he could get into the coronary sinus, uh, there was no support and he couldn't get anything beyond simply a wire. So at that point, uh, things changed and um, the decision was made to go ahead and try to use the Worley system. So we got out the, the Worley table, or not the Worley table, we got out the height adjustable table with the, an extension uh, and the Worley tools and here's how things went. Uh, the first step uh, was we were able uh, to engage the coronary sinus with a standard braided core and then advance an 035 angled glide wire uh, deep into the coronary sinus. From there we did the usual trick uh, that we use for difficult coronary sinus which was to take uh, an angled braided hydrophilic catheter and advance it over the glide wire, through the hemostatic valve, through the braided core, through the sheath, and up into the coronary sinus. And then once we had the uh, braided, once we had the uh, vertebral vein selector deep in the coronary sinus, we took out the glide wire and replaced it with a short taper Amplatz wire. And by now, I hope you're all familiar with the difference between short taper and standard taper Amplatz wires. So we got to this point, and usually this is a, provides enough support to advance into the coronary sinus. Uh, but despite the combination of the braided core, the vein selector, and the Amplatz wire, the sheath back here with the braided core here just would not go any further. Now there's a couple of options you can choose here. You can um, use the anchor balloon uh, and other things, but uh, given that we had seen a lateral wall branch right out here, we decided to park the whirly sheath just at the os of the coronary sinus um, and maintain support with the Amplatz wire. So with the tip of the whirly sheath just inside the coronary sinus, the braided core and vein selector were removed. And then uh, with the tip of the sheath in the coronary sinus, we advanced the glide wire uh, into the target vein. Now this was possible because the Amplatz wire was here stabilizing uh, the sheath and the tip of the sheath was deep enough into the os of the CS that the glide wire went right in. So from there, uh, we combined the, the vertebral vein selector, telescoped it inside the renal LVI subselector, and advanced the combination over the glide wire uh, and into the coronary sinus. 
then to be sure we're, we were where we thought we were, we took the glide wire out and puffed a little contrast to look for the side branches um, and what the corner is, what this big lateral wall brain, uh, branch looked like. And here we are in the LAO projection, so it's clearly a lateral wall branch. And then even without a wire, we were able to advance the vein selector uh, deeper into the target vein. So once we had the vertebral vein selector deep in the target vein um, and the short taper amplats wire supporting the sheath, we were able to advance the renal LVI subselector uh, deep into the target band branch. The next step uh, was to place a wire through the vein selector and we chose this 0 and 8 wire, um, the V18 control wire from Boston. Because uh, it's a heavier, stiffer wire uh, and only the Medtronic lead will advance over this 0 and 8 wire. So remember that the most angioplasty wires that you're familiar with are 014, and so this, by being 018, makes any 014 wire seem like a wet noodle. So we have a nice stable wire in there. We have the subselector all the way to here, and so from here, advancing the, the lead deep into the target brain branch uh, was quite simple. The next step uh, is to put a stylet to the tip of the lead, a soft stylet to the tip of the lead um, for stability, and then to remove the amplats wire. So this is the amplats wire here coming out. And once the amplats wire is out, we still have the stylet to the tip of the lead, and now we're going to peel away uh, the whirly sheath. Now remember, it's always important to check the slack in the LAO projection to make sure you have enough slack. And we do, and now we have a system. So once we got started with the Whirly system um, and the table turned perpendicular, um, the, whole t the whole implant probably took about 20 minutes, uh, whereas the first implant that we didn't show you was a couple of hours and again, another couple of hours utilizing industry tools um, until we went after it with the uh, Worley system. So this doesn't actually take time, it actually saves time. Hope you find this useful.